Welcome back to the county seat. It's called Snake Valley and it straddles the border of Nevada and Utah. Underneath this valley is sparsely populated with ranchers lies an aquifer full of water. Las Vegas wants that water, but how much of it do they really get? Because half of it belongs to Utah. Here with a story on that growing controversy and the challenges that face it is Terry Wood. Water. It is the liquid, life-giving gold of the desert. And it's especially important in an arid state like Utah or Nevada, where sometimes even the smallest amount of water can feed a life where otherwise none would be. But what happens when you take that water away? Snake Valley, Utah, a 100-mile-long area that straddles the Utah-Nevada border at highways 6 and 50, about four hours southwest of Salt Lake City. At first glance, you can easily see water does not flow here in abundance, at least not on the surface, but it does exist under the ground. Underground aquifers help life hold on in this parched place. Water pumped to the surface in some areas where green replaces the ever-present brown. A small number of farmers call Snake Valley home and what they lack in the modern convenience of urban life, they make up for with hard work and dedication. Their entire way of life is threatened, however, as the water that makes it all possible may disappear. Not because of drought, but population a plan to build a more than 250 mile long pipeline to take water from northern Nevada and the Snake Valley to quench the thirst of the booming population of Las Vegas. They want to take uh, 50,000 acre feet of water out of Snake Valley and 180,000 uh, acre feet of water out of Spring Valley and if uh, that amount of water leaves the valley uh, there won't be any economic development. What's here is here. The small number of people that live here don't seem to be as big of concern as the larger populations of places like Las Vegas. Obviously to us it's pretty critical. It's to thumb our nose and say, you know, there's not that many families out there would be an injustice to them. Because that line on the map that defines the border really is meaningless when it comes to, to pumping water out of, out of the ground. Las Vegas, Nevada is the antithesis of towns like Eskdale in Snake Valley. Large, flashy, congested. But they do have one thing in common, and that is their dependence on water. With a population of more than 3 million, the Las Vegas metro area uses more than 300,000 acre feet of water every year. We're already in a place of trying to conserve the water that we have, the possibility of, of having a large amount of water pumped out of our aquifer uh, just seems catastrophic to us, not only to threaten our livelihood here. To us, it's the most critical issue that we've had to face in maybe two, three decades as far as our livelihood. And without water, we don't exist. If the Southern Nevada Water Authority is allowed to pump this groundwater, some predict the water table could drop as much as 100 feet in the Snake Valley. The native vegetation, such as the sagebrush and greasewood that grows in that area, needs a water table of at least 25 to 50 feet to grow. And if that water is gone... The worst case scenario is creating a dust bowl and creating an area that uh, isn't livable, you know, either for people or for wildlife, which would affect not only White Pine County, but could affect counties in Utah, including Salt Lake and Utah County. Water is indeed a precious resource, particularly for those who don't have it. The residents of Snake Valley are hoping that all Utahns will realize this affects them too. This issue doesn't just address what happens to a part of ground when you pump water out of it. It addresses how two states with their own constitutional forms of governments and their own sets of water laws are gonna have to come together around a common resource. Well, the county seat I'm Terry Wood. Thank you, Terry, for that report. We are going to continue our discussion of Snake Valley water in our roundtable discussion when we return. Joining us will be Phil Gardner from the U.S. Geological Survey, John Harja, the Director of Public Lands Office in the Office of the Governor, and Darren Smith, a Millard County Commissioner. What do you picture when you hear Rich County, Utah? Winter adventure? Snowmobile action? Pristine skiing? 
spectacular solitude? Well, if that isn't what first came to mind, then you just don't know Rich County. Snowmobiling Monte Cristo, ice fishing Bear Lake, skiing the backcountry. Come and find out what you never knew you were missing. Rich County, Utah. I think renewable energy and wind farms is a good way to go. We have a lot of land here to do that with, and the opportunity will grow as time goes on. If a person wants to work in Beaver County right now, they can find a job. I can't think of a better legacy that I could have left for my town. In order for there to be adventure, there must first be a land that offers it. In order for there to be discovery, there must first be something undiscovered. It's time you discovered Northeastern Utah's dinosaur lands, the trails, water, beauty, and history that have been 65 million years in the making. Take your journey to a destination where adventure is only limited by your imagination. Join us in Uinta County, Undiscovered Utah. 